Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today is an extremely, extremely busy day. Although it's Sunday, I have absolutely, absolutely no time. I need to work on something very special the entire day, very concentrated, finishing another song to release it as soon as possible. The name of it is Love or Let Go. I'll play it to you in the intro. But for today's video, I will answer questions, your questions very important questions for beginners, music producers, musicians, stuff you just need to know. By the way, before we get fully started, I got the first samples for the covering of this wall right here. Not so shiny silver, metallic, chrome, dark silver, black, another black, another black. I'm not sure. Let me know which which one would you prefer. I think like going with a color is impossible because due to the LEDs changing to any kind of color, I want to keep it neutral. Black is maybe too dark because the floor is already like pretty dark and the walls, so maybe something reflective silver kind of. Anyways, let's start with the questions. First up, how much did you spend on your DIY studio? Build. I spend roughly around 11,000 euros just the material not included my my time my work time and not included all of the gear you see so just like the absorption the room acoustic the planning second floor all of this is floating the ceiling the front wall speakers into the wall all of this included plus the LEDs which was by far the most expensive because I love to play around it just i don't know like every color i love it but it's not needed you still get a great studio without the leds big question how to control depression and focus on making music yeah that's something everyone has to deal with making music or not making music probably musicians are more affected because it's a really tough business and uncertain and you never know how much money you will make if you even make any money you work a lot and there is no boss guiding you telling you what to do you have to figure it out yourself and being your own boss is usually the hardest so i'd say whenever you're close to giving up just think about how much time you actually already invested in it and that all of it is lost when you give up so keep on going things will eventually happen if you just have like a small downer that happens every once in a while i was always very close to quitting every month back in the days where i didn't make enough money to support everything just keep on going eventually it will work out adjust be smart be active and things will start happening if you got frustrated just like i usually i just work so much that i'm not frustrated anymore that's that's my only solution and it works is it possible to use native instruments and waves on a new macbook air waves yes native instruments actually yes but the installer doesn't work so you cannot install it if you get it from another machine or time machine backup then probably yes i don't know i couldn't try it but the native access app doesn't work for whatever reason i think they're doing it on purpose it's restricting you when you open it up it says you're on an m1 doesn't work but it should actually work very interesting what did you do with your first income did you invest it back to your studio or did you do something else i make vocal heavy house music so my success depends hugely on the vocals i get so i spend most of my time money effort on trying to find good vocals or making an instrumental and then finding vocals that fit to it at the beginning you won't get the good vocals because you're too small as an artist but try to get the best possible work your way up for me it's always the bottleneck the vocal of course as long as you're making vocal music for instrumentals not that much if you do instrumental music I would invest it probably in marketing. That's like the second most important. Make a good song and then market it as good as possible. Advertisement, get people involved, Instagram, spend a little. Why do famous artists upload their music with minus six loofs, the loudness, to Spotify and it sounds good without any penalty? You shouldn't really worry that much about Spotify. I think, and I've tested it, like when you make your song according to what Spotify wants and upload it to Spotify, it will sound less loud than everyone else's track and less good. 
So I would just do one master for your song, not multiple masters for different platforms. That's just a waste of time and money. Just make one and make it loud. Just make it loud. That's what everyone is doing. You want to compete, it needs to be loud. It needs to not distort, but some styles of music depend on being loud, especially electronic dance music, especially the more clubby kind of electronic dance music, dubstep. It just lifts from being squashed really hard. It needs it. So I would still do it. It's your artistic choice. If Spotify then lowers it to match it to everyone else, that's fine. But if you already deliver it lowered, it's not the same thing. It's then not dubstep anymore because it's not crushed hard enough. How do you get rid of distractions and how to be in the creative mood all the time? First of all, being in a creative mood all the time isn't possible. And sometimes if you don't feel like being creative, just sit in your studio, sit in front of your computer and just force yourself for the first 10 minutes and it will eventually flow. For me, it always helps to just listen to music and then I hear what other people are doing. I get jealous, I want to do the same. And then I just start making music very easy, at least for me. And getting rid of the distractions, I think one of the best things is just putting your phone in airplane mode or just not putting it anywhere close. Just like get rid of your phone. That's already distraction number one. And then maybe also disable the internet on your work machine, at least for the times where you're working. And also most Apple products have these um, leave me alone kind of modes. That helps a little. And usually if I put my phone aside for four hours, I get a lot more done. Like Instagram is very distracting. Emails, very distracting. Phone calls, very distracting. Get rid of it. Best advice for someone looking for their first label release. Make an extremely good song and send it to a label where it fits. And if you have to just copy the style of that label for your first release, then do so. You can still then change it up. Like just get your foot in the door and, and try to enter by making something that just fits there. Have a goal in mind. For example, you want to release on one of Tiesta's label, make a song that fits there. Plan it, have it as a goal, make it good enough, compare it to all other releases they have. Make it a little unique, not copy it 100%, just like the style, the direction, so that Tiesto could actually play it live. And then send it there, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's good enough and not a hundred other people send the same stuff to them. And you'll eventually get there, get to know the people, maybe meet them at one of the conventions, ADE and stuff like that, once COVID is all done again, hopefully soon. And that's usually how you get things started. Like deliver good music, get connected with the people, keep on delivering good music. And then eventually a year later, when you have like four or five releases with that one label, diversify your style a little, make more your own, try still to work with them or maybe jump over to another label. And if you try to find a new label and you already worked with a good label, it's more likely that they will listen to your stuff and actually sign it. Which plugins do you not have? I, there are like hundreds and hundreds. There are so many plugins I don't have. I try to be very minimal, especially now with my new MacBook M1 where I reset everything. I only install the stuff I'm actually really using. Changing the pitch of the vocal. Is it enough when I'm remixing to not get in trouble? If you're talking about editing, like making an edit, because remixing would be official. Someone asks you to remix it and you get the parts and there is no problem. If you just take someone else's song and make something with it, it's usually called an edit. It could be a remix if you have the individual parts, but why should someone put their individual parts online? So usually that's legally speaking, absolutely not allowed. You cannot take someone else's part and make something with it without allowance. So pitching it doesn't change anything, but pitching it might make it possible to put it up on SoundCloud and YouTube because the algorithms, the programs won't detect it as the original and flag you right away. But let's say you take Rihanna, a vocal of her, pitch it up or down, YouTube doesn't detect it. You get a million plays because it's really good. Trust me, the major labels that own the rights to it, Rihanna and her management will get in touch with you and either sue you pretty hardcore or because they love it so much, they will offer you that you transfer all of the rights of it to them. They make all of the money and they just take it as a free remix. So I personally wouldn't do that kind of stuff. Maybe just for promotional purpose. What kind of headphones would you suggest me for mixing and mastering? Just honestly, 
honestly, mixing headphones, mastering headphones is an absolute no. Yes, you have to double check it on headphones. You can check for clicks, pops, and that kind of stuff with headphones because you can listen a lot closer. But I don't even know a single mastering engineer that masters with headphones. You just need to be able to listen to it in an acoustically treated room with speakers, decent to really good speakers, and just be very experienced. So I wouldn't suggest mixing and mastering with headphones. I've noticed your mixes have improved since you got analog gear. What's your master chain? My master chain, I'll eventually make a full video about it. Did my sound improve due to the analog gear? No, 100% not, it's not the gear. I'd say the biggest improvement to my songs in recent times is me having more knowledge, putting more time and effort towards them, working more professionally, and yes, this room right here, the room acoustics. I can hear what I'm doing, that's the most important. The analog gear is just nonsense that I like to play around with. There is no need for analog gear, period. Do you think TikTok will become a better platform for artists, musicians than Instagram? I don't think so. I think TikTok is mostly reserved for people that actually make content for TikTok, like very short, funny, memeable kind of stuff. It's more a musician should get in contact with them, maybe even pay people to promote their music through TikTok. But you as a musician now starting to do TikTok only works if you take it serious, if you have fun doing it, and you kind of become a musician that is also to 5% a TikToker. Otherwise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The last question for today, very interesting. What's your next goal after the studio is 100% done? Yes, I need, I need something new, especially now, now during the Corona stuff where you can't do a whole lot. I, I already have an idea. It's a business idea and I will get other people involved. It will be some sort or form of management company. I want to manage talent and I'm, I'm like getting in touch right now with artists, but I'll share more about it once it's all set up. Right now it's just like an initial idea and seeing if people are actually even interested in it. But that could be like the big thing, the big side thing next to me concentrating on making music as much as possible and taking care of this channel right here as much as possible and then that new idea. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. For me, it's now time to just make music for the entire day. We'll see us tomorrow back again right here on this channel.